Welcome to the first IHF Children's Handball Symposium. My name is Courtney Gayen. I'm a member of the IHF media team and I'm your moderator for today's session. Today we have three translation languages available, French, Spanish and Arabic. To use these translation options, you need to join us on Zoom and you can find these at the bottom of your screen by clicking the globe icon marked interpretation and selecting the label for your language. If you're you watching on Facebook right now, one of my colleagues is going to send the link in the comments so that you can join us on Zoom. As this is the first lecture of the first IHF Children's Handball Symposium, we are going to begin with some words from the IHF president, Dr. Hassan Mustafa. Good uh, afternoon, good morning, uh, good evening, uh, different continent, I don't know exactly. But uh, I'm very happy to be with you today uh, to attend this uh, very important uh, tema for us. And then uh, my opinion that uh, we have in very difficult days or difficult time for all of us. But at the main time, we don't like to stay at home without any activities, especially for our children, our uh, our stakeholders that uh, this is why I wanted to give uh, my uh, gratitude to uh, Elena Hapkova, Hapkova that you already did a very good job. You and your commissions uh, at the main time that uh, I am always in contact with uh, Ms. Khalifa, they already informed me about uh, the activities of the handball at schools. We starting since uh, seven, seven, eight years ago before. And then uh, we already we have approved uh, our, uh, our commissions and working together at the same directions, help each other, solidarity, all of us to be in our sports, to serve our sports and all our children in, in this uh, very difficult time. At the meantime, also that uh, you know that uh, it's uh, the main things for us that uh, the future of handball, these children uh, that are going to play, the starting from now, if starting from eight, seven, nine years old, after uh, five, six, ten years, they will be in the national teams of their uh, countries. This is why we already have to also to to work from in, from in this age to give the, the, the lines how we can work to, with, uh, with these children in the futures and we can prepare them uh, for, the, for the futures. And also uh, the main things also for us is that uh, we want to have for each continent a different working group working in the, in the, in the different country, uh, continent. Means because I am is huge for our, uh, our commissions, I know that they are very working very hard, but at the meantime, we need to make easy for them that we have to be in contact with the continental confederations to have in each continental confederations working group under the leadership of, uh, of uh, this uh, IHF uh, working group. This is very uh, difficult, very easy for us to, to make it easy for our commissions and our, our teams. At the meantime, also that uh, you know very well that uh, we, are, uh, we are in a very good way. We are very happy and the IHF I repeat, I repeat again, that we give all the facilities to make this well, this uh, project 
in a success way. And uh, we have uh, a lot of a lot of facilities that uh, for each yeah, yeah, every everything that we can help and uh, support our national federation to success this important uh, working group. At the meantime, also that uh, we already have targets that already I discussed with uh, Alona. Uh, I think two three years ago about uh, we have a, a, to put uh, like. Uh, our strategy to be uh, about 50 million children playing handball in, in 10 years. And this is why we have also to work in these directions. And this is very important for all of us to work together in, in, uh, in this project. This is a project, as I told you, and repeat again, this is a very important project for all of us to increase the number of our uh, our players in, in, in everywhere. Special that we want to also to make a special uh, program for the underdeveloped countries that, they, that they need help and support from our side. I know that you are, you are always working in this direction, but I repeat because it's very important for us because we are not looking only for Europe. But at the meantime, Europe is very important for us. They are leading handball uh, worldwide. But at the meantime, also we need to have worldwide, I mean for all the small countries and also for the underdeveloped countries that we need from them to be with us in this direction. I don't like to take a, a lot of time, but uh, at the meantime, I'm very happy. And I have a very good luck for all of you. And I hope, I hope that we we'll continue to make this uh, this courses uh, in uh, in in the futures in different countries in the different way, uh, and also with a different uh, lectures also because we want to, to increase the number of our lectures in each continental and each each federation also. Thank you so much and a very good luck for all of you, and uh, thank you, Elena, again that you did a very good job with your group. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Masafa. So everybody, this uh, first IHF Children's Handball Symposium forms part of the IHF Virtual Academy that was launched last year to facilitate global online learning and licensing. Uh, this is the second course focused on Children's Handball. We had the Children's Handball Week last year, which focused more on theory and this symposium is going to be more practical. You can find all the lectures from the Children's Handball Week in the Virtual Academy, as well as on our Facebook page. For this Children's Handball Symposium, we are offering certificates of particip participation for participation in all of the lectures. If you would like to receive this certificate, please leave your name and your email address in the chat so that we can send this to you. Today's opening lecture is presented by Chair of the IHF Handball at School Working Group, Dr. Ilona Hapkova. Uh, this lecture is being recorded, so you will be able to access it later on demand on Facebook and in the Virtual Academy. Please feel free to ask questions throughout the lecture and we will address as many of those as we can at the end. And that is the end of that's all the thoughts before we start. Let's dive in, Ilona. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, whichever is uh, appropriate in your time zone. Thank you, Courtney. And uh, my first and great gratitude and thank you, it's for the uh, IGF President Dr. Hassan Mustafa for his opening speech, but especially also for his huge support through all project which is led by IGF Handball at School Working Group, which we hope that will be helpful for you in uh, your country, in your schools, and uh, with your teams. Before that, I will start today lecture, uh, getting children start in handball. Uh, we know that it's uh, different for each of you around the world, that we would like to give you the opportunity to choose the topic of your interest. You can write now in the Zoom your name, country, and topic. What do you want to that the IG Working Group will develop and discuss on 28 May? We provide you free topic. First one is a profile of volunteers, coaches, and physical education teachers. If it's difference between them, 
if they need some different performance or uh, different stores through the teaching process, that this is one of the topic which about the working group members can discuss on 28 May. The second one is a physical literacy and talent identification. Handball is not only the sport, it is education tool that engage the children in the physical activity of the whole life. And also talent identification, it is important question how to work with the young players, how to develop their talent and how to take care about them. The first topic can be, if you choose it, about natural evolution in motor development of the skills. We can have a difference of the grow up of the children. We can see also differences between boys and girls. We can have a sensitive period that how we can manage it, how we can work with children. This is the first topic proposed by Handball at School Working Group. Last topic is a free topic because each of you have own working experiences that please let us know what you want to that we will analyze and discuss for you. We will take in consideration all your requests and in the future, we will work with it. Neither that maybe will be not selected for the webinars. That please wrote today in the Zoom, or you can wrote also in the Facebook, in the comments until the 7 May. Then we will select the topic which was most recommended and we will discuss about it. And now back to the session. After the short introduction, I will speak a little bit about game phases. Then we will go to the ball familiarization because ball is a principal object of the game and we need to work with him and have a control of it. Handball is a mix of the technical and tactical elements that we will discuss a little bit about game principles and for the conclusion at the end. Maybe you know that the International Handball Federation was established in 1946, but what was before with the handball? Because we have already in past a lot of information how the handball was growing and the rules was uh, written at the beginning of the 20th century. Handball was a part of the International Amateur Athletic Federation because it is collective sports with a lot of challenges for the athletes and athletes need to be really complex. For this reason, I choose this Estonian decathlete, Erkinol, and I like what he said. Every beginning is difficult, but it gets easier from there on. I told usually too during my courses, the first step is really hard, but you need continuous step and step by step, and it will be much easier. That don't give up and go forward. Start to teach the children handball. Handball is a great dynamic, high speed and powerful, powerful game, as you can see in this video. But also it's full of the creativity and especially of the fair play and team spirit. <laughs>
you can see in the TV a lot of high level games, or maybe you play handball in pass, but then you ask, but how to start teaching handball to children? There is so many rules, contact. No, this is uh, not like a high level handball. The handball for children is really appropriate for them and it's a great sport for them. And this is the task of the IGF Handball at School Working Group to look to the new trends in the handball and to simplify and adjust it what it's important to teach the children, when to start to teach them and how to explain what they need to learn. And this session will be specially about why, why we are focusing on this or that, why we have to do this. Because if we will understand why we need to teach children these skills, that we will progress much more easily and children will enjoy it and go it. We need to inspire through the high level players, through handball stars. And I am so glad that one of these uh, handball stars take a time and recorded the video and share his experience with you. It's Diego Simone and here is his message for you. Hi, my name is Diego Simonet. I am a left back and center back of Argentina. I started playing handball when I was seven years old in the club Sociedad Alemana Gimnasia Villa Ballester. When I was a boy, I played football 11, futsal, volley, swimming, of course, handball. And when I was 15, I was called by national team of Argentina and I decided to, to stop uh, with other sports. The most important thing when you are young is to enjoy the sport, share moments with friends and have fun. Thank you, Diego, to share your experience with us today. The next part is game phases. The handball is a sport played in four main phases. Two phases in the possession of the ball and two without the possession of the ball. First one, what everybody know and everybody look, is attack or so-called offense. Here is a team preparing the situation for the scoring. As the team score or lose the ball, they need to switch between attacking role to defensive role and start the transition to defense, quick retreat. As a team is organized in the defense, it can be one-to-one -one defense or different kind of the defense that we call it like a position defense. As the team win the ball, including a good save of the goalkeeper or if opponent team score a goal, that start a transition to the offense, also called like a fast break. This phase, is the easier way how to score a goal. And if the team didn't find the opportunity to take a shoot and score the goal from the fast break, then the game continue in the offensive phase to create the suitable scoring position. Every time it's much better to look at the video that 1000 words, that look at the game phases in the next video. Every time one team is in the possession of the ball and another team is without the possession of the ball. Only a few moments as the ball is in air somewhere, no team has the possession. That please look at the team in yellow, it is the team of the Sweden, that they try to find the special position that they increase the possibility that the player can score. And as a team work together in the offensive phase, that they find the solution to try to score a goal. Then immediately, if the team score a goal or lost the ball, need to move back that again, look to the Sweden team as they lost the ball, that they immediately move back to take the control 
of the defensive phases. As a team, it's organized in the defense, like team of Egypt now, that they try to work together to try to win the ball by their movement, by their activities. And you can see the interception of the ball, which is from the good work of the defender. And as you win the ball in the defense, that the team, now it's a team Denmark in the white uniforms, they project to start fast break and to try the scoring this easy goal. Then one against, you have here these four phases from attack, transition to the defense, defense, and transition to the attack, which are repeating still again and again. But which phases of the game do we need to focus on when we are teaching children? Because the whole system in offense, defense, can look so be complicated that what do you think? Which phases we need to start to teach the children as first? Who said transitions, that it's correct. But we need to explain also why is a transition? Why we need to teach the children transition? In our first children's handball week, we were speaking about the handball rules that the children are playing without the contact, that the body contact is avoided. It is not only for the child safety, but especially because children are taking the specific position and positioning on the field, because they are focusing what's going on the field to taking the information and to learn the using the open space. Because naturally, if you will see all videos, which I will show you today with the children, they move against each other. They never cross to each other, only by the accident. That we need also to learn what is natural for the children, that it's moving to the free space, not put them directly to crush to each other. That we broke the natural evolution of the taking the information and learn how to usefully use the space. In this moment, the children also learn so important things, how to change the roles from the attacking to the defensing, that we have the position of the ball as a team, or we don't have the position of the team. And we react, what happened in front of us? If we can continue or if our teammate if in better position. And as the number of the players is reduced, that the children has much more opportunity to catch the ball, pass the ball, take a shoot, or also improve different skills as a dribble or faking. In this video, you will see the transition of the children. And uh, first is the pictures and uh, sequences of the novice level. These kids are playing, they start to uh, play the handball just a week ago. That it's nature that everybody are around the ball. Where is the ball? Everybody are here. But then as they develop their skills, they will learn how to use under your leaderships more the space and develop their activities throughout the whole field. And it's also good to naturally develop the physical condition of the children as they are running for the scoring the ball or avoid the opponent to be available for scoring a goal. And then as they will learn using also the open space, you will see that naturally they will develop this kind of the faking that just keep moving, moving on the open space and propose the solution to your teammate. Of course, we need to speak about ball familiarization because subject of the game is a ball. You can see on the picture or on the photo how the importance is about the ball handling because the most important thing 
what you teach the children is suitable size of the soft, not heavy balls, which children can easily grab and hold with their fingers. If the balls is too big or too he heavy, they are not able appropriately move with the ball and develop their skills. And they are afraid also to make another activities. And if they are able to move with the ball without looking to the ball, taking information about that they will develop much better the decision-making skills and be, be able have a better reaction of the situation which increase. They will develop also better their skills, reception of the ball, passing, shooting, or during the faking, they will not lose the ball and they will move with the ball. To develop the ball handling, ball manipulations, and basic game skills for the children, it's great to use the leads up games and activities. One of these games are catching games, relays games, or different games, uh, games based on the Google ball. Include every time the general motor skills development in the practice of the handball. Because like this, the children will have fun and naturally will develop the speed, power, abilities, and also coordination. About coordination, we'll speak also Pablo Greco uh, in his webinars, uh, how to dissociate it, uh, movement, and how it's important coordination in handball. In this video, you can see how the boy is handle the ball in the finger, and he is able to move with the ball, jump with the ball, without taking the look at the ball. And it's also important that you can move with the whole arm without the losing the ball. The good position of the holding the ball is that you have a small gap between palm and ball. I know that it's difficult to have a lot of suitable balls, but you are, as a PE teachers and coaches, crafty. That make the balls as each child can lead and learn this, uh, uh, this uh, activities with the ball. You can use the sacks, uh, you can use the socks, you can use some foam to put in the plastic box and so on. That don't uh, be afraid about the beginning of the handball. You need only something where the children are able to hold. Usually, as I teach the children, I give them some story, story behind each activity, story behind each practice. This is the last etap of the warm up exercise that I speak about the story as a young girls and boys are traveling from one venue to another one town to the country. And through these experiences, they grow up that they were starting in the squat, walking to handle the ball, that they grow up with the ball on their hand. And now they arrive to the end of their journey and they are so big and tall and they move back to home. That it's not only good exercise to hold the ball, but also to warm up. Another exercise or story which I like, it's that I give the children driving license. It can be for the car or this time for the aircraft. And they have to bring the ball in the suitable handling from one place, throw the obstacle run to the another one place. And like this, we work. The third exercise, it will be game, which I will show you. It is about two kingdoms, two castles with the treasures. And it's up to you how many balls, materials you have that you divide it in the half. And these children are not able to defend it correctly. That we don't put the defenders like a soldier who take a care about the castles and treasures. 
we only provide them story that they try to bring as much the secret balls to their kingdoms, to their treasures. That the children are running from one side to another side and they try to put the ball behind the back. Neither that I am not speaking Chinese, that we need to find the body language with the children. It is not only that the children playing without any comments. Through the game, you try to give the correct uh, position to help them, to lead them to find the solution. And as they are able to progress and to develop their skills, you need also find the signals to stop the game. And in this moment, I like the freezing freezing the situation as the children stop you take their attention and you can make a short analysis count the balls or see how was it that freezing will be now children stop and you look who is moving who is standing and then you have the time to make the short evaluation and of course every time give the children feedback who win this time it was a team without the blue jersey that was a team yellow and blue who win that you can see how the children are happy and glad that they win their game in the next video we will see a few exercises which we can also use for the warm-up uh in the in the training as a ball manipulation that the player is doing manipulation the ball between the legs from one station to another station usually i put a different kind of the balls and also different kind of the of the materials how many players you have the same numbers of the players you need to have the station. That you can ask the players, make three times, four times, and go back to the line, or only keep a time limit that they are working and try to adjust, to move from one place, to, to look where is a free space to be able to continue. This, another one, exercise is different organization that you divide it your team in several groups and they run cross and in the middle and at the same time you develop different ball manipulation in this case it will be ball ruling and uh, you develop to taking the information and look as the children go against each other they don't rush to each other You can transform it also to the relays gaze that you told the team that you need to go from one side to the another side and back. And team who will be as first in the basic position can win a point. That it's different organization also for the relay games. And the release games, it's also great to involve the competition of the children. They are working now uh, with the manipulation around the body. And then the next turn, they will work with the working in between legs. And as you planify your exercise and work, you try to go from the easy, low intensity to the highest intensity and more complicated about the planification your first practice we'll speak more in details on friday my colleague dr patricia sosa gonzalez passing and catching this is the basis of the cooperation and a key element for the collective play as a technical aspect we need to work with the both hands with the dominant and non-dominant 
to try to teach the children good po position of the throwing arms and legs. And of course, it is not immediately as they will do it perfectly right. Only it's initiation and then you can develop through the different kind of the games and activities. And still ask the players that they take the information. They need to have a time to make the decision. As you can see on the pictures, under the pressure of the defender, they have still their own space to be able to adjust their pass. Remember, player with the ball is responsible for the pass and his teammate is responsible to be ready to receive the ball, go to the open space and be ready to catch the ball. And good pass is the one what a teammate can catch. We have a different kind of the technique of the catching and passing. But the most often is the technique that we catch the ball with two hands, which uh, the fingers, they globe the ball. It can be on the level of the check or also on the difference level, because not really often the pass is so pressy. Did the children develop naturally catch the ball as is suitable for them? Much more easily, is this catching the ball through the bouncing. That if it's the bounce pass, it is much more easily to catch the ball than the stride pass. For the initiation of the passing and catching, we can start as the players has own ball. That it means that each player are working with the own ball and try to make the bounce in alternance dominant and non-dominant hand and then catch the ball. And then you, they need to looking around to don't crash to each other, to look where is their ball, to try their power, to try to adjust. As they are able to catch the ball alone, did we move in pair? I don't like too much to work face-to-face -face passing exercise because in the game, players are usually in the movement. And as the players are in the movement, they need to apply the distance, power, and also direction of the pass. Because I saw already that the players are really great to passing each other face to face, but they was not able to adjust their pass through the movement in the game. The passing and catching, you can develop anyway and everywhere because it is really fundamental skills. About the teaching in the real world and how to adjust our activities to your possibilities, will speak my colleague Gret Kroth on uh, Tuesday, 25 May. For improvement, of the passing and catching, you can also involve it in the warm-up exercise. That the children are moving in the goal area and make a dynamic stretching. In this case, they need to move with the heel up and have a hands up. Then I put them more activity to develop a more intensity and physical condition, as I already spoke. That the players progress and work to, together to apply their past and be in movement. For the catching the ball in one hand, it is advanced skills. But if you are working with the soft, suitable balls, the children will naturally try to catch the ball. That it will be their responsibility. I will go just a little bit back. If they catch the ball, in one hand, that it is not mistake if they try it, but they need to take a responsibility. If they try to catch the ball to one hand, they need to take a control of it. If not, they need to catch the ball with two hands. 
we can play also the games like a ball walls with different uh, alternative balls, which can be developed also strange of the players and have a fun activity. Before that we will speak about game principles, uh, I will see if you are taking attention and if you were listening to me really well, that I have a question for you. Please now write your name, country, and good answer directly to the Zoom chat or in the Facebook at answer to the question from the first part of this webinar. Do you remember how many game phases does handball have? I was speaking at the beginning at the, about the game phases and it will be okay only if you will write number 15, 20, that uh, how many game phases we were speaking today that uh, handball has. And which are the more important in the teaching process of children? That please wrote your name, country, and short answer to this question. And who will answer correctly first? I will pronounce his name, country, today in this live webinar. That once more times. How many game main phases handball have, which are more important in the teaching process of the kids? And now I will continue in the, in the game principles. We have a different choice of the methodology and approach how to teaching handball. It's different way how we can choose our methodology and on what we want to focus. IGF Handball at School Working Group make a choose to use the game-based approach. This is linking together development technical skills through the tactical situation. It means that the children need to understand what is it as a situation on the field, then they need to choose the good suitable technique and apply this technique to make it and be successful. That they learn how to solve the problem which there is in the game. It's then up to you to design the exercise game with appropriate learning tasks that it's suitable for their level and skills. We can use it for it leads up games and activities. What about I was already speaking or small side games, parcel game forms or basic game forms that the number of the players is reduced and the children have more possibilities to try this activity. Regarding designing the task and teaching skills, it is so great and it's really recommended to use a lot of small side games in your lessons. That you are working with the small groups in the smaller area and you can adjust the rules as it's needed for the task which you want to working on because uh, there is not needed all handball elements like a goal area, like a goal, like a exactly field or goal post and so on. It is only up to your possibilities which you have in your condition. Don't forget, every time as you have a small side games, you have two teams in the oppositions and you are developing at the same times offensive and defensive skills. At the same time, cooperation in the attacking skills and def defensive skills. That uh, in the game, the children has a changing conditions that they will learn 
again and again to make a suitable path, but in the changing situation and condition of the game. Here is a one example of the small side games. We have two teams, uh, red and orange. Red team uh, is now in the possession of the ball. And as the red team is the, is the in attack, the green player is a, like joker that he can help the team who has the position of the ball, that we create superiority numeric. The opportunity how to score, it can be different. Put the ball behind the line. In this case, catch the cone, or you can put hoop on the place. That at the first time you have more attacking players than the defensors, that they can spread the game and working together. Of course, that you turn the jokers with another players. Another really suitable uh, game form for the activity of the children is a partial game forms. It is game related task, game playing situation like in the real handball, but it's only simplified mm -hmm. that you select something small. And then you continue. We manipulate here with the playing constants that we increase or decrease the intensity. We can uh, repeat the specific skills, what they need to uh, improve, or they learn how to solve the specific game problems. And this is, this is so, so, so important. That uh, here is an example of the few simple partial game forms. As first, we divided the sector in five similar area. The players will develop the dribbling through the, through the move up to the goalpost. You can use whichever you need as a goalpost. And then you will turn with the different sectors because they work differently. Only in the middle area, there is the opposition situation one against one. I will take it back as you can see that in the middle sector, it's playing one against one. And then after time limits, they switch to the sectors. We can play also two against zero defensors to move up through the field and to find a solution to the score because also this parcel game forms, it's not easy for the children. Another parcel game form, it's give and go. We have here the situation once against one on the big large space that the player without the ball, we faking without the ball to avoid the defender and how us will be ready and alone, the teammate pass him the ball, and then he can go alone to score. Game principles are, are the tactical elements which we need to develop with the children because they are increasing in each game. And if children will understand these game principles, that will be able also playing much more quickly and better to evolve to evolution and develop their skills. The first game principle is maintain the ball position. As the team win the ball, they need to be able to pass the ball between them. Because uh, you can see usually if the children start to play the ball, first pass and they lost the ball. That we are working about maintain the ball position. Then we work about moving up the field, that it's making forward progression. We try to prepare the situation for the scoring that we are speaking about third game principle, which is attacking the goal and scoring. In this situation, we develop also the shooting activities, but not only shooting activities, but creation of the space, faking and so on. Regain the ball 
and the protecting the goal is the linking with the defensive phase as the players are able to switch from the attacking role to the defensive role. And it's also including with the goalkeeper. Regarding the maintain the ball possession, we from the beginning mix the technique and tactic. Because if we are only passing, as I said already face to face, we develop strictly these skills. But if we add the movement, opposition, at the beginning from the young players, we are playing without the defender, only as the team try to organize themselves and bring the ball from one side to the another side. Then we can add one or two defenders that it's superiority numeric for the attackers, and they learn to spread the games and use the space. And then we continue with the development, one-to-one -one, uh, defense, and the players will be in the pressure of the defense and they will learn how to fake it with the, without the ball, avoid the defense, be on the free space to help his teammates to receive the ball. And of course, we need to learn them how to protect the ball because if you have the ball in front of you, it is easy for the defense to touch it and you couldn't make from here the good pass. Then we teach them how to protect the ball with, uh, with the forming arm throwing position. That avoid your defender without the ball and move to the free space is the main goal of the maintaining the ball possession. You can see here, as I told, two teams passing the ball between them. After the pass, they need to move and go back to be able to receive the ball. We can take the player from one team to the another team, like a defender, to put more pressure. But really, usually, only to put the two teams that they try to organize them, it's not easy. In this video, you can see the goalkeeper how he go outside to help his teammate in the difficulty to maintain the ball possession. And this is what we teach the children already now. The next phase is, is a making forward procession. And here we combinated the short pass, which we had in the maintain the ball possession, with the longer pass, we develop also the dribbling and spread out the position. We try to teach the children to apply their pass at the good moment as the teammate is in the fast break to be ready to catch the ball and to prepare the scoring position. That remember that a good pass is faster than a running. We will start now, not from the novice level, but from the beginner level, how it's important to move up the ball through the field, how they move to the free space to propose the situation to be available for his teammate. And then with the novice level, we have the story that we need to bring the goal apple from one yellow area to the another yellow area. And this passing in between the players, it's moving a resource to the winning the possibility to organize themselves. You have here some teams who understand it better and who progress easily than another. And also in each group, you can have one leader. As you can see here, he's just go to the yellow zone because this is the area where we have to be that move there and we will win and we are so glad that this is the goal of the making forward procession about attacking the goal and scoring we have a lot of small side games 
to prepare the situation as the children can score, shoot on the target and improve. And I am sure that my colleague, Milan Petranovic, uh, during his webinars scoring the first goal will provide you a lot of games and exercise how to improve these attacking uh, skills. That uh, it is not only about the shooting, it is also about the creating the opening and be able to cooperate together to find the solution as a team or as a player to go for the shoot. That the player need to understand this is suitable space for me or my space is closed and I see my teammate in this good position that I will throw the ball to him. For the development of the shooting skills, as for the passing, it requires a good coordination. For this reason, we start usually with one over, with the shoot over arm, uh, one hand shoot from the place. And then we can move to the running shoot which you can see in the slow mode in the video. This is slow mode only as you can see the correct technique as the player are not stopped immediately uh, as he should, but as he continue. Then after the, this kind of the shooting, we move to the jumping shoot because jumping shoot is a little bit more complicated for the coordination. But for the initiation, we can start with three kinds of the shoot from the beginning. And here is one of the small side games as the players try to score on the target, which is on the goal. With the small children, we don't need some big opposition if we try to work on the attacking skills. We need to create suitable space that in this, we have here the area that you can see the children are more or least behind this area. And from behind this area, they try to shoot. That you can see as they try to score a point to shoot to the target in the middle of the, of the area. Where is in our case thematic, but it can be cones, hoops, that every time run and take the ball and go back. You can have more area as much you have the space or materials. The goal is that the kids alone count the balls and you have the time also to correct the good position. We already spoke how it's important to give the feedback and to use the freezing method. That I freeze the games and then I'm asking how many times they was able to score. And they show me on the fingers how many times they do it. And you encourage them. And it's also nature as the children play that they help you with the materials take out from the field. Regain the ball and protection the goal, the goal. Usually we focus with the novice level on the attacking skills, but we need to give them also basic information about the defensive skills. Because as they progress in the attacking skills, they want to more and more win the ball in defense. That winning the ball on defense will be one of the specific topics of this webinar sessions, which will lead it by Dr. Nabil Taha al -Sahab. And you will enjoy much more information, not only about the defending, but also about the goalkeeper. That it's important that the player understand we lost the ball, that we need immediately try to start to win the ball. It is not about the contact, it is about the good position and positioning to be able to intercept the ball or steal the ball through the, through the dribble, dribbling. Goalkeeper, it's also part of this activity as a last defender or first attacker. That uh, players 
need to understand this field roles as a defender and players. Don't forget that all deliberated contact between players should be avoided. That we can see these partial games three against two as the defenders try to cover the space and intercept the balls. That they are looking what's going on, what's happened and try to catch the ball. And as I said, goalkeeper role to be able to adjust his movement in the goalpost and save the goal. Because if the goalkeeper save, it's also that the team win a ball. About game principles, we'll speak much more in his webinars, Dr. Gerard Lassira which will be focused on the handball as an interactive sport, sport. That uh, try as quickly as you can with the children, organize the games or small activities, which can be like festivals, that you divided a field for different area. And on each area will players have a small side games or they will have the leads up games or they will play the games as uh, you can see in this video of the handball and develop their skills. And then you make the rotation area by area. They will have fun, enjoy and naturally progress in the skills which are so important. Then try to use the natural development to children that they want to use in the free space. Usually from the handball field, you can make free mini handball field. Let's try also in your lesson or in your planification, focus on the handball games and mini handball tournaments organized in small area. We arrive to the end. And I would like to, for the end, uh, just to summarize. Handball is a sport that we need to develop at the same time technical skills with the tactical skills. And this is the great, as you can work with the games to repeat a lot of activities like a passing against and against, because we are not robot. And we need to make a lot of repetition to improve our skills, to have an opportunity also to make a mistake, to learn from the mistake and then get it right. We were speaking about the game principles. And uh, I have here the good uh, answer who, who wrote uh, as a first uh, in our seminary. It was uh, Paul Martin from the Germany that has a good answer that uh, we have four game phases and uh, it is the uh, transition phases more important that we work uh, with the children. Uh, and it was also from Italy, Esteban Alonso, who provided uh, at the same time these correct uh, answers that uh, thank you, your, these participants, to be so quick and active. And uh, game principles, I will just repeat, maintain the ball position, making forward progression, attacking the goal and shooting, regain the ball and protecting the ball. And now, I need your full attention, attention of everybody. Because Diego Simone take a time to record a challenge for kids that look at it.
fumble have a good control of the ball is very important. Here, a good exercise that you can do at home. Diego said, we need a good control of the ball. Let's try this exercise with right hand and then also with the left hand. For the last few words, positive emotion has a particularly strong influence of the attention, memory, reasoning and problem solving. As you are preparing your lesson, Try to think about modification because it's important to be ready to adjust the game activity, what is suitable for your kids and enjoy your work. Because if you will enjoy the practice, the kids will enjoy with you. Thank you, our translators and you for the attention. And now I am ready for a few questions if we have it. Uh, yes, thank you so much, Eluna. Yeah, we do have a few questions. Um, let's start with, first of all, somebody asked about the exercises you showed, what age group you recommend these for? Uh, in the handball at school working group, we start with the working with the children about five years that the youngest children which you saw, it was the kids in the children garden, that uh, they was under six years. They was four, five, six years old. And from them, we can start to really playing uh, all these games. And they are already able to play a mini handball game. Um, regarding five years old, somebody asked if you have a group of very young children like this, what number do you recommend is okay to have in one session? It's depending. It's depending the country. It's depending how the kids are able autonom to work. Because you saw in the videos, it was about 20 children and I was alone with the translators. Mm -hmm. In some countries, we are able to work only with five, six children with one responsible or we can have also helper from the youth team who can help us. That it's depending how the children are educated, how they can take attention, because usually they are not able to take attention so long that the exercise have to switch or you can make the modification as they are in. And one side, you need to give them the time for the adaptation, but on another side, we need to time how to, how to develop that not too long, that it's boring and not too short that they don't have the time to learn. Mm -hmm. That from the number of the kids, it can be really from five to 12 to 20. It's really depend uh, the level of the automity of the children. Mm -hmm. um, Somebody asked, you mentioned that you give children feedback and so on, but, but can you elaborate a bit on this? Because somebody asked about how you can give feedback to very young children. That the first feedback, I try to correct them through the game. That uh, I repeat a game uh, what they need uh, to make as a task. Then it's a simple, uh, we have the game, we have the opposition, that we look how was uh, successful, as I was asking how many times you score, did they show, and uh, I didn't make who score three times, who score two times, but I only asked them how many times you was able to do it. And everybody claps to hands to each other uh, without uh, any big consideration. Or as we have the ball games that I told this time with this turn, next turn will be like this, and I usually don't give the final number of the points, but I give the feedback that there was somebody who was successful and somebody who attempted the session. That it is a mixing, not exactly like in the school, 
but told them that I look at you and I see what you are doing and I'm grateful for it and uh, you progress and you can do more and more. That it's not uh, like in the high level handball, you score five goals, you have uh, five uh, assistants, you spend so many times on the field. It's a little bit uh, wise. Uh, somebody asked about strategies and games to teach children not to crowd around the ball. Yeah, this is uh, this is something really nature. As the children start to play, they don't have developed so much skills that uh, they want to keep the ball and they are not able to adjust their path. That first, at, uh, we try to put them in the small groups and uh, in the small groups, they try to learn to maintain the ball. You can see one example which I made that was four players to moving from uh, one uh, yellow area to the another yellow area to bring the ball. And it can be also like a relays game of the teams that the teams are working together to bring the ball through the passings from one side to another side. Then I add a defender that it's something what they need to take attention what's happened, that it's every time superiority numeric of the attacker against defender. And as they develop step by step to apply better and better, that they also naturally understand that they need to move to the free space to receive the ball, that it's a throw a lot of small games, leads up activities that the children develop a little bit. Okay, and somebody else asked um, about this. I'm assuming this is probably going to be covered in some other lectures, but uh, how to design and plan the initial trainings. Yeah, uh, as first, uh, the next webinars will be about the plannings that Patricia will uh, definitely speak uh, much more about the uh, designing the first uh, practice. Uh, but uh, what we need to know as first is the level of our children that uh, have some feedback what they are able to do and where is our starting points. That uh, beginners, it doesn't mean that we start with the children under five years. Beginners can be children under 15 years old that we start to playing the handball, that they have already developed the motor skills differently than five years children. Then this is the first step. Then we need to look what we want to go, in which condition we are, what we have as a materials. That uh, in the school, it's more that the children initiation to play together, to try to work. And from here, we start with the passing, small side game to score. And uh, usually, as I am going to the mission to teach in the school, at the end of the first lesson, we are able to play the game that we immediately start to play the game, either that they are not too much successful, but every time it happens that they score a goal. And this is a point that they have this feeling, I already played the game, that don't keep you behind to afraid to play the game without the contact. Opposite, try to propose much more situation of the gameplay. Okay, we'll just have one more before we finish up. Uh, somebody asked, uh, what do you think is the ideal age to start handball? Ideal age, this is pretty tricky question because I know that uh, from uh, we are born, we start to move and that it's important when we start to move immediately as we are born, that it's important to start to grow up. Somebody is already born with the ball Somebody prefer to start different sports that it's not so bad too, because we have a much more different skills and abilities that I couldn't recommend it, uh, what it's suitable age. I can say start to be active as soon as you can. And if the handball will be in your heart from the childhood or through the puberty, you can achieve, you can be really successful because in the high level players, we have them that they start five, six years 
but we also have the players that they start 15, 17, 18 years. And today they are playing in the high level national teams that uh, there is no age. There is the question of the movement. Perfect. Um, okay, thank you. So I think we'll end there. Um, so I just want to remind everyone what Ilona mentioned earlier that they do, we do want your input regarding the last lecture on the 28th of May. So you will be able to comment on our Facebook stream of this lecture for the coming days and please tell uh, the working group which topic you would like to be covered on the 28th of May in the final lecture. Um, we will be back on Friday again with the next lecture. And as Ilona mentioned, it is planning the first practice with Dr. Patricia Gonzalez at four o'clock Central European summer time. And I do want to remind everyone this, this lecture was recorded so you can access it on demand on our Facebook page and it will be on the Virtual Academy as well at ihfeducation.ihf.info. Some of you were asking about registering for this symposium and you can also register for the symposium on ihfeducation.ihf.info. So that brings us to the end today. Thank you so much, Ilona. Thank you to you, Courtney. Thank you to everybody and see you, I hope, soon on handball field with the children. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.